All right, today what we're going to be going over is how to check an inducer motor. So when you call for heat at the thermostat, you turn your button to heat, you turn the temperature up. Um, if at the control board you have 24 volts uh, from the W to the C terminal, this is the next thing that gets called. All right. Uh, so what we would need to do is we would need to go ahead and disconnect this. All right. We could see if 120 volts is coming uh, through these wires right here. So. We can come right in the back, okay, so we don't have to have our hands near it. And then we can go ahead and call for for heat. All right? I'm gonna turn our multimeter on and see if we get our voltage. Alright, so we're calling for heat right here. These wires right here, the hot and common wire, 122 volts going to the inducer motor. The main problem is the inducer motor is not turning on. All right, so then we go to the next step, all right, which we're going to turn the furnace off at this point. Turn it off. All right, we get no voltage there. Everything's off. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect our capacitor, and we're going to check our capacitor. We're just going to go ahead and short this out right here is any remaining voltage. Normally what happens is when a motor runs, it'll dissipate the, the uh, capacitor out of that unless it's a start, like a, a start capacitor with a relay that uh, kicks it out. So we're going to switch our multimeter over to MFD and we're going to check our capacitor here. All right, this is a 5 MFD or 5 UF capacitor and we're reading 4.93. So the capacitor is good. It's within 5%. All right, the next step we're going to do, we're going to leave that disconnected. Now we're going to take the wires going to the inducer motor. All right, and we're going to go in the back and we're going to check resistance from white to black. All right, when we check that, we're going to turn that multimeter over to the upside down horseshoe. And we read 82, 85 ohms of resistance, okay? So uh, the, the coil inside the motor is good, all right? We're going to check from hot to ground now, all right? We should not have any any reading on that. If we had a dead short on that, uh, that would mean it would be 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance to electrical flow. That would be a dead short, like the windings inside the motor have burned out and um, are touching the frame of the motor. So that would not be good, okay? It would also not be good if the black and white wires had 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance because that would be the same thing. It would actually be um, shorted onto the common wire inside the motor. All right, so it's good that we have resistance value. That, mean that, that means that work is going to happen. So then you want to go ahead and check, and maybe there's a, a, a bearing that's stuck on the inducer motor. Obviously, that might be one of the very first things that you check on this, um, but I'm just kind of rolling through everything on here. Um, you want to check that, make sure, feel the motor, see if it's really hot, um, all of those types of things. All right, but you want to spin it freewheel and make sure that the inside is not bound up as well, not only the bearings in the inducer motor, but inside the inducer motor housing. Okay, so that's basically it for the inducer motor. All right, check the inducer motor. I hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time at AC Service Tech.